I'm Scott Billington. I'm Vice President of A&R at Rounder Records, and for the past year, I've been teaching at Loyola University, one course at a time, the Introduction to Music Industry Studies course, and next semester, a record production course. And those two courses exemplify the two um, parts of my career over the years. I've been in the business now for 40 years. I've worked for Rounder Records for 38 of those years. And there's the business side of my job, how to put together a deal, looking at all of the elements that go into making a record successful from a business standpoint. Making the right kind of deal that the artist feels good about, that the company feels good about, and being the liaison with all the different departments within the record company to help assure that this record is going to be a success once it's released. So being the liaison with publicity, with radio, with the marketing people. Uh, on the other hand, um, I think the part of my job that I like most is actually making records, of uh, being in the recording studio with a group of talented people, putting together the best team that I can possibly assemble to make a fantastic creative project and to help the artist realize his or her vision of what their record will be. Perhaps sometimes that's my vision too, finding songs for the artist or putting together the band that will accompany the artist or hiring the right arranger and shaping the sound of the record with, with an engineer. And I have a couple of engineer partners that I've worked with over the years, so we've evolved somewhat of a, a way of working together in a sound. So those two things come together in my job. The creative, actually making the, the best record that can be made, and then working with the record company to bring it to the largest possible audience. Well, the Introduction to Music Industry Studies course is, is structured around um, looking at, at a group of facts every week, really, how the business works. It's real nuts and bolts stuff. Copyright law, publishing, how a record contract is put together if you sign a contract with a record company. That's what we're doing in our day-to-day -day classes. But as an adjunct to that, there is a semester project. The students are broken down into groups of four or five or six people each. And each of those groups becomes its own little record company. They're producing a song in the studio. They're coming up with a marketing plan, um, putting on a concert or producing a video. And over the semester, it, it can't go into, into real depth on some of these issues, but I'm hoping that everybody will come away with a real good basic understanding of how a record company works, how you make the creative part of the recording process work, and bring that together with a marketing plan and a, uh, oh, all of the legal documents and everything else you need to do to make a successful company. Well, there has been a lot of interesting dialogue with the students on these different teams, these little companies. Um, somebody isn't pulling their weight. Somebody wants to take the company in a different direction than others. Um, that's life. That's what it's like in the record business. And you've got to figure out how to deal with sometimes very difficult personalities in the business. So I think the, the practicum, what the students are learning in this class, does have a, a real world value in terms of understanding that it's not always going to be, OK, this is what you do, this is what you do, and everybody pulls their weight. They've got to work together to make the project work. My aim in the music production course is that students will come away learning how to hear, how to listen to music, and how to hear all of the different elements, the building blocks that go into making a record. We'll listen to some work by, by famous producers, classic records. Uh, we'll dissect tracks in, in the class to see how everything fits together. And um, well, we'll also learn about the nuts and bolts of pre-production, the importance of learning what you're going to do before you get to the studio so that you don't waste time and money and you can concentrate on the, uh, the performance at hand, but um, listening, hearing, knowing what's there. If you can't do that as a record producer, then you're sort of lost. And that's the skill I hope that the students come away from the class with. We're, we're undergoing such a dramatic transformation of the music business right now as people move from the acquisition of music to access to music. The model for exactly how that's going to uh, shakedown in the end isn't really established yet, although we're seeing now income streams from, from streaming that are substantial. 
And record companies are becoming um, different than they once were in that the record company has to be a service company for the artist, providing all of the marketing, um, the support, the artist development that goes into making a successful career. And that's very different to me in, in many ways. I mean, the company that I work for, Rounder Records, I always used to think of as a filter, that if you wanted Americana music, American Roots music, and it was on Rounder, you knew that it was probably going to be good if that was the kind of music that you liked. You can think of other labels like Blue Note, or like Chess, or like Verve over the years that had that same sort of, of cachet. That's, that's the part of the record business I've been in. And perhaps filters will still be an important part of the business as we move forward. It's hard to see what the, what the business is going to be five or ten years from now. But my hope is that the students that, that, that take this program in general will come away with a sense of what they need to know as entrepreneurs themselves. Even if they're not going to be involved in negotiating contracts or in capturing all of the different income streams from their songs through affiliations with a publisher or understanding sound exchange, um, that they at least are aware of all of these things so that they can connect with the right people to make a solid business for themselves. Yeah, if I had a son or daughter who was going to college to be in the, uh, in the arts business, be it music or visual art, I'd certainly be a little nervous that they might not be able to um, make a viable living when they came out. But one of the things I like about this course in general, or the whole program here, is that you get a footing in a lot of different areas. And I think that's probably been my strength over the years in the record business, in that I didn't specialize too deeply in any one thing. Sometimes specialties would emerge, and I would indeed get deeply into it. But I've been an art director, I've been a copywriter, I've done radio promotion, uh, I've been a salesperson. I would write the newsletters for the record company, really whatever needed to be done. And having a broad skill set is good insurance that probably you're going to be able to make a living or you'll be more competitive than somebody who just wants to do one thing. And I think the music program at Loyola addresses that. Well, New Orleans has a very unique music community. Um, it's not the center of the music business. If you wanted that, you'd go to Los Angeles or Nashville or New York. But the people that have come here um, from the outside, uh, professional people, and this would include a number of people on the staff at Loyola, have tended to come here because the music was a magnet that drew them here. And there's a musical community here that's unlike that of any other city in, in, in this country. And um, I guess it's a little, a little bit provincial sometimes, New Orleans, but people here are so proud of the music. It's part of the fabric of life here. And if I was going to choose a school based on both the, the staff that was available there, the opportunities to learn from people who'd had real uh, boots on the ground experience in the industry, as well as being in a stimulating musical environment, this is where I'd come. I mean, it's why I'm here.